How the fuck are y'all doing? All right. I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there. If you eat salad from a fucking mason jar, you are a fucking asshole. All right? I'm just putting it out there. What's up with this trend of everybody putting... All these trendy restaurants putting all their shit in mason jars all the time. I went to a restaurant the other day. My beverage was in a mason jar. My appetizer was in a mason jar. My salad was in a mason jar. 75% of my meal was in a fucking mason jar. Was there a, a plate famine I don't know about? There's some... Uh, all my shit was in a mason jar. What am I? Am I a 1920s hobo? <laughs> Let me get my sarsaparilla in my mason jar and my succotash in my other mason jar and put it in a red polka dot handkerchief and tie it together and stick it on a pole on a stick and go off and ride the rails. You know, I got a fucking mason jar on my front porch. You know what's in the mason jar on my front porch? Cigarette butts. <laughs> Nobody's eating my fucking cigarette special, you know, you know, fucking special shit out of a mason jar. <laughs> out of my front porch. That <laughs> is some bullshit. You know, my grandmother used mason jars. She did. My grandmother used mason jars for two things. Tomatoes. She put her tomatoes in mason jars. And she also put her moonshine in mason jars. And I gotta say, if you use mason jars for anything other than tomatoes or moonshine, you need to get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> You're full of shit. Uh, family wash. Family, you don't put any shit in mason jars, do you? Fuck that shit. See, that's right. That's all. Fuck yes. Yes. That's why I will support the family wash. No shit in mason jars to make you think it's trendy and special. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> you know what's funny though? When I was a kid, I tried to run away from home. And the thing I was talking about with the handkerchief, the polka dot handkerchief, and putting your shit in it and, and putting it on the, on the stick and running away from home. Like, when I was a kid, the only two things I watched at that point, like, I tried to run away from home from when I was six, you know. I'd only watched Sesame Street and old Woody Woodpecker cartoons at that point in my life. And I thought that when you ran away from home, like, that's what you did. You put all your shit in a handkerchief, and you tied it to the end of a stick, and you announced that you were running away from home. Because that's what I did. <laughs> I grabbed a red bandana. I remember this vivid. I grabbed a red bandana, and because I was six, the only things that were important to me and that I thought I could survive with out on my own were my toys. So I put a Barbie doll in there and some sort of robot toy and like a My Little Pony. And when I tied it up, you know, I had like I had like a, a My Little Pony arm hanging out of this side and a robot arm hanging out of this side. <laughs> Looked like a fucked up science experiment. And I, I tied it together on the end of a stick and I went up to my mother and I said, well, just so you know, I'm running away from home. And my mother looked at me and said, bye. <laughs> Go on and go. I made it about three houses away before I started to cry and she came and got me. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Did everybody have a good holiday season? Good holidays? Hey, That's good. I don't know if this happens to y'all, but like in my family, there's always the one uh, family member that likes to make something really gross every year. <laughs> something really nasty with the food and you, you feel obligated to like it. I have an aunt who makes something really nasty every year, and she came up to me this year, and she was like, well, you know, your Uncle Sam, he just loves my creamed ham banana loaf. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck a creamed ham banana loaf is. 
And then I realized all this shit that my family likes, it's all this gross food, it came from a time in the 60s, you know? Came from a time in the 60s where they're all smoking a lot of weed together at the holidays. And they're all like, I got this, man. Let's bake a cake. And put that shit in a lime jello mold. Awesome. Merry Christmas, everybody. All right, bye. All right, your side gap of anybody here. James Victor Cherry. How the hell are y'all doing tonight, guys? Good? Uh, if you can't tell by my accent, I was born and raised here in Tennessee, and the only concern of mine my whole life was that no one ever confused me with a redneck or white trash. And I recently found out from my girlfriend that I have white trash tendencies. Well, I have one. I like Kid Rock. <laughs> it's bad. It's, it, that's a white trash tendency right there. But I don't like him now. I don't like him now that he's a fake-ass Leonard Skinner. I liked him when he first came out, when he was doing rap music, when he was hanging out with midgets, fucking Pamela Anderson, punching Waffle House waitresses here in Nashville. That's when he was awesome. Today, the shit, no, it's not good. He lived the white trash fantasy. All those things he did, every white trash person thinks about while they're on the tilt a world in Cotton Town, Tennessee. That's what they think about, and that's why I love him. You know, when he did rap music, he had the song Cowboy. It was an awesome song. I love the song. But there was always a part of the song I never understood. During the song, he said, I'm going to start an escort service for all the right reasons. <laughs> What are the right reasons to start an escort service? Did he know someone who owned an orphanage or something that it was going to get shut down and they needed to raise money so that they could keep the orphanage open? But Kid Rock spent all his money on hookers and cocaine so he couldn't give them money and Kid Rock can't have a bake sale because he looks at a box of Betty Crocker and he's like, fuck this shit. I'm going to call up the hookers I know and we're going to make some money for this shit. <laughs> That's what I think. Uh, that's my opinion on life. Kid Rock has all the answers. I ran into a friend of mine tonight here, actually, and uh, he wasn't with his wife. So I kind of got a little, uh, a little inquisitive, and I found out that him and his wife have started to have an open marriage. And that sounds pretty fucking cool to me. Everyone's looking over to where I was sitting for the open marriage people. Uh, he's the guy taping this shit. Uh, <laughs> His name rhymes with Jamie. Um, <laughs> and that puts me in an awkward position. Because the moment that I hear that and my girlfriend's sitting there, the first thing that she looks over and says, no, we're not doing that shit. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that shit. I already have one woman yelling at me. I don't need another one bitching at me, too. Fuck that shit. You know, I don't want another woman in my life like that. You know, I like to keep my side bitches on the side. It takes all the danger out of it if she approves. You know, I want, I want, I want Jessica time. I want Shaquayla time. I don't need to mix that up. I need that to myself. You know? <laughs> I don't need two women bitching about how quick I can. Because <laughs> you're never going to get together if you're living together. And you're like, yeah, he came in 42 seconds. <laughs> I only got 33. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, I guess that's what they made those big double-headed dildos for, for if I ever had two wives and to fuck each other. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's about my time, guys. Uh, <laughs> um, go find you a, an extra wife and disappoint two women. That's my opinion. Thank you, guys. Join in. Ready, guys? Ball with the ball, the bang, 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 the bang,
A bindle. The little handkerchief. Is that the what stick? Called? I think it's called a bindle. Really? It has a name? A bindle. I have no idea. Look it up. Look it up on, you know, Hobo Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Up next. Can't get this guy off my mind, y'all, since he told me he was voted homecoming king by his high school band. And I'm just so excited for Ross Hamilton. <laughs> 